Now let's look at um, the controlled sources. Uh, as we discussed in chapter number one, uh, operational amplifier can also be used to create uh, controlled sources. Uh, and there were four different types of sources that we discussed, voltage controlled voltage source, voltage controlled current source, current controlled current source, and current controlled voltage source. So some of those circuits uh, are going to be um, developed in, uh, in these following sections. So first we can look at voltage controlled current source. That means it is a current source and it, the, the value of that current source is controlled by the, the voltage that is applied in some other part of the circuit. In this case, um, right here, in this case, the first we're going to look at floating load inverting voltage controlled current source. So we assume that the voltage that is controlling controlling the source, uh, the, the current that is flowing through the load, this voltage is the input voltage, and we want to control the load current. Now there are three different configuration of voltage current current sources. The first one is floating load inverting voltage controlled current source. Floating load means that the load is not connected to ground. Load is considered in the feedback loop. So this is my load right here. And input voltage is going to be controlling this current. Now an important characteristic uh, character, character, characteristic of current sources is that the load that you're connecting it should not affect the current source value so the current IL should not be affected by any value of RL that's a basic characteristic of the current source now if you look at the circuit I mean this circuit is what inverting amplifier circuit remember but the analysis that we're going to do is a little different. Observe that the analysis is very simple. It is right here. As we know that if you apply KCL at uh, virtual ground right here, you have IL load current equals to input current. So IL will be equal to what? V input minus zero over R or V input over R, right? So the load current is directly proportional to the input voltage and you don't see any RL value over here. So it is not dependent on the load resistor value. One over R is called GM, which is called the transconductance. So IL is equal to GM times VI. So this is very simple circuit. It is considered as floating load inverting VCIS. Uh, one thing that we discuss about the voltage, so about the um, current sources, and control sources in general is what will be the value of the load current that will saturate the output that is what is the maximum value of the load current that you can um, you can design the source for such that the output is going to be just at the edge of saturation because remember if the output is saturated it's no longer working as an amplifier because the shape will change from sinusoid to a square wave at the output. Input will be sinusoid, output will be square wave. And remember, if the shape is changed, it is no longer as an amplifier. It is no longer a linear amplifier. So <coughs> if the output saturation point is 13 volt, let's say positive negative 13 volt, then we can do the analysis to see what will be the maximum value of current, absolute value of load current, that will keep the output just below saturation point, right? And that's called the dynamic range of the load current. That value is called dynamic range of the load current. So from this circuit, again, we can easily figure that value out. The analysis is given right here. From the feedback loop, zero minus V out is equal to IL times RL right zero minus v out is equal to il times rl so v out is equal to absolute value of il times rl so the value of il times rl should be less than the saturation voltage in order for il uh, or in order for the source to be divided to be designed for the maximum value of I, um, il that will not make the output 
go to the saturation value that it will not produce output that looks like a square wave and I have done some examples here as well but first let's look at the floating load non-inverting VCIS now this is the inverting VCIS because the input is connected to the inverting terminal similarly I have non-inverting VCIS um, the concept is same the current passing through the load which is again floating it is connected between the output and the non-inverting terminal there is no connection of the load with the ground so the current that is flowing through this load resistor um, should uh, uh, depend only at the input voltage and um, a constant value which is the proportional and the constant of proportionality but it should not depend on the value of RL right so again we do the analysis the voltage at the non-inverting terminal is going to be VI because positive and negative have the same voltage so when you do the analysis apply KCL IL is equal to I input and IL is uh, V output minus VI over RL right um, right here okay I think I need to let me see oh sorry yeah this is right uh, so IL is equal to I input so IL since we are looking at IL we don't have to change IL into Ohm's law so IL is equal to V input minus 0 over R right which is I input so V input minus 0 over R which is the same thing as GMVI exactly the same analysis as we did in the last um, uh, inverting VCIS floating load inverting VCIS so again this shows you that the load current is directly proportional to the input voltage and it is not dependent on the load uh, resistor and again we have constant of proportionality 1 over R or transconductance right <coughs> and again you can find the uh, dynamic range of the load as it is given over here uh, V naught minus V I over R L that's your load current and from that you can figure out that the dynamic range I L times R plus R L should be less than the V saturation in order uh, for the circuit to behave as an amplifier or behave linearly so if you look at it in the last one inverting you had I L times R L should be less than V saturation and in this one you have I L times R plus R L should be less than V saturation so you have an addition of R over here that means the range of I L for this circuit that will produce the same saturation voltage if assuming RL value is the same is going to be less than the range of IL in the inverting uh, floating load inverting VCIS right because here you're also adding R so let's say if uh, you know saturation is 13 volt and the IL value RL value is 1 kilo ohm so IL is going to be 13 over 1 kilo ohm 13 milliampere right now here let's say RL is, is still 1 kilo ohm we set is still 13 but you are also adding R let's say R is again 1 kilo ohm so that means in this case IL will be equal to V set over 2 kilo ohm right so it's going to be a smaller dynamic range for IL so that's the difference between the two um, or, uh, two current sources the dynamic range of non-inverting is less than the dynamic range of inverting VCIS and the third current source uh, voltage control current source is grounded load VCIS not the floating load but grounded load and it is also called Howland uh, current source and in this case the load is not connected in the feedback loop but the load is grounded connected between the non-inverting input and ground analysis is here a little bit more complex analysis as compared to the last two but it's still it's pretty straightforward so we are assuming different currents in different branches and different voltages so the current over here is I input current over here is I1 current in the feedback loop is IF current here is I2 and the current here in the load and I'm gonna erase that so you can see it easily current here is I load so these are five currents here voltage at the inverting input non-inverting input sorry is the voltage across the load VL right this is the voltage 
across the load right here. And how are you gonna figure this voltage out using the voltage division? Because again, no current flows here. The current going into the non-inverting input and inverting input both are zero. So the current that is coming out, I input, um, and these register are going to appear in um, uh, in series with each other. Uh, since there is no current going over there. So you're gonna figure out what is the voltage across RL. And once you figure out what is the voltage across RL, uh, which is, let's see, uh, VL is V out over two. Using voltage division to find the voltage at the inverting input, we will get VL is equal to V out over two. Let's see, that is VL, and since you have, uh, oh, over here, right here. So instead of, instead of, um, of uh, you know, concentrating here, we're gonna concentrate over here, let's see. So you have R and R. These two values are the same values. Of course, current is flowing here, and it's not gonna go here, it's gonna go here. And these two register are going to appear in series. So the voltage at this point is going to be half of the output voltage, right? Half of the output voltage. And since the voltage at the negative input and positive are the same, so the load voltage basically is half of the output voltage right here. This is how we figure this out. So we apply KCL at non-inverting input. I input is equal to IL plus I2. I input is equal to IL plus I2, and from that we apply Ohm's law, and we'll get an equation that we will solve, and you will see that the final result is IL equals V input over R. So once again, the load current IL is not dependent on the value of RL. It depends on the input voltage and the constant of proportionality, which is one over R or GM. I'm not showing GM over here, but it is, 1 over R or GM. You can find the dynamic range, uh, and, and you know the derivation is given here. Load voltage is IL times RL, right? And uh, load voltage is, of course, V out over 2, which is IL times RL. So V out is 2 IL times RL, or 2 times magnitude of IL times RL should be less than the V saturation for the dynamic range of IL. So basically it is half of um, the first circuit that we discussed, the inverting, uh, floating load inverting with CIS, the dynamic range of current is half of that. So these are three um, voltage controlled current sources. And then I have few examples here, example 2.3, actually I have one example here for um, these current sources and uh, this example actually is based on the last current source which is the Howland current source I think, yes, Howland current source. And next, we're gonna study the current control voltage source.